Mike and Tony, you both received instructions earlier in the day, and therefore you know the rules. I wish you both an awful lot of luck now. Return to your corners to await the starting bell. Good luck. That's Arthur McCanty doing his sixth heavyweight championship fight, his 78th world championship fight. Tubbs says he knows how to fight. The champion, everyone says it. It's a little bit more difficult to pull it off. Let's see if he really wants to rumble as he says he does. I see Mike Tyson iron the uh, belly, the midsection of Tony Tubbs, so look for him to jump right on him in the first round. Mercanti says they're all set, and there's the bell for round one. Tubbs throws the jab, and Tyson responds in time. Well, you're right, Dave. A lot of fighters find it difficult to uh, set Mike Tyson up because Mike now gives a lot of uh, head movement. One of the big questions has been whether Tubbs would clinch and grab and simply try to survive with Tyson, as did Bone Crusher Smith and Mitch Green. For now, it does not look that way. Well, Tubbs stated that he would just exchange punches with uh, Tyson because the best way he felt to beat him was to be inside, throw short punches, combinations. And here he selected to do that. I don't necessarily agree with that, Jim, because what happens, Tyson, with his shorter arms and upper body strength is able to uh, do a great deal of damage to the midsection of his opponent. Watch for the left hook by Mike Tyson. Tubbs trying to go downstairs to Tyson's body. You see this left jab of Mike Tyson. He's starting to use it more consistently now. He found, he found out that it gets a man into punching range. You can begin to see the startling hand quickness that Tubbs brings. Startling partially because of the shape of his body. Well, here with Tubbs, the uppercut, I also know the uppercut of Mike Tyson. He's able to throw it, throw the same punch twice, under no. Tyson missed with the left hook. Earlier he had landed a wicked right to the killer kidney. Look for a looping right hand by Mike Tyson, because that's the punch I see that uh, Tubbs is vulnerable to. He keeps dropping that left hand. One minute to go in round one. Tubbs landed a left and ducked away effectively. What Tubbs needs to be doing now, he needs to throw two and three jabs to kind of break the rhythm of Mike. Because what's happening, Tyson's starting to set up. You need to break that rhythm with a jab. Tubbs throwing the uppercut. A lot of people think he will have to be effective with that punch because Tyson comes in constantly. Well, Tyson also lunged him with an overhand right there. And that's one of the mistakes he makes. Ten seconds to go in round one. After the bell, and now Mike Tyson returns to his corner. I thought Tubbs fought a very effective round. I gave him the round. He landed some hooks, and he went to the body as promised. Remember, he told us that nobody has gone to Mike Tyson's body so far. Voice is that of trainer Kevin Rooney. Here, Mike. Get here, Mike. Oh, you got it? Six and one at the middle. Yeah, take that. Don't keep moving. Can I make a move for you? Move to the right. I'm cutting for that body. I'm doing that foot. You hit him with the right hand for the chin. Just relax. Yeah, come on. Okay. Second down. Second down. Okay, good. Second down. Round two. Out, out. Stay there. The talking in Tubbs' corner was done by trainer Odell Hadley. So now Hadley and Rooney have had their minute, and round two begins. Tubbs keeping that right hand up. 
because of the left hook of Mike Tyson. But also, you notice now you see a much more relaxed Tony Tubbs. So now his punches are being more fluent. Look at Tyson with the rapid fire three jabs in a row. Something new within the past year. Well, Tyson is starting to improve each time he steps into the ring. But what I see here at Tubbs, Tubbs is pretty much trying to get range so he can drop his right hand because in this corner they told him to drop the right hand. But the left hook lands, but he needs to come back with the right hand. There's the right hand, Jim, I spoke earlier about. You must give Tyson angles. You can't remain stationary. Hands must stay up and stay out of the corners. But indeed, Tony acknowledged in talking with us, Ray, that you couldn't finesse Tyson completely. You have to be willing, as he said, to fight him. Well, you saw that, that double punch with one hand. Sort of a bolo type punch. And those are the type of punches that do a great deal of damage because the body shot, and then the uppercut. Raises the chin up, and then the left hook comes into play. Good uppercut by Tubbs inside. Snap Tyson back a little. Tubbs has to be very careful. You notice he put both feet together, and that's easy to be knocked down or knocked off balance. He's trying to use his additional weight. Coming up on a minute to go in round two. Tony Tubbs so far appears in no way intimidated by Tyson's fury, as have so many of his opponents. Good left hook, good, good combination by Tubbs. You know, Tubbs just trying to gain respect, and I think he's done that. Good left by Tyson. That's real. Those hands must be kept up higher. And again, like I stated earlier, Jim, I don't think it's a good idea to change punches with Tyson. Good body shot, but we need combinations now. 30 seconds left in the round. Both fighters have had their say here. I couldn't tell whether another punch hurt. Tubbs is hurt. Tubbs is hurt badly. It was a left hook. And it's over. Odell Hadley has jumped in the ring. The fight is over. With stunning swiftness. And the fans are enjoying. They're showing their appreciation here. Remarkable. The tide of this fight changed within 15 or 20 seconds. Well, that's, that's what a great puncher can do. The boxer is thinking all the time, and the puncher is punching all the time. Um, the only thing I can say now is that if you thought that uh, whale hunting was outlawed in Japan, we just saw that uh, Mike Tyson hadn't heard about it. And Ray Leonard, let's take a look back at the left hands which did the damage. Well, Tyson now starting to find his range. The left hook there pretty much did spoke for itself. It's self-explanatory because it was a short and powerful left hook that put Tony Tubbs down. And here Mike still showing that he is a good finisher. Tubbs had already been reeling a bit before that point as the result of a short right against the ropes. What was happening actually was that Tyson was wearing down Tubbs because Tubbs tried to stay inside and fight Mike Tyson fight, which I thought was a mistake. Once again, that's short left hook. And uh, for those who say Mike is not really one punch knocker outer, I think they need to look at some films again. Mike has enormous strength and great upper body uh, power. Early now in round two. That was the punch against the ropes that really started things off. I said a right, it was in fact a left right on the forehead. But if you can appreciate the power of Mike Tyson because that punch hit him on the temple and it wasn't really a six inch punch, it was shorter than that. So Tony Tubbs becomes the latest in the string of victims. Tyson's 30th knockout in 34 times in the ring. Bad, Mr. Hadley. 
And the Japanese, who were so disappointed 15 years ago by George Foreman's one-round knockout of Joe Roman, got about two and a half minutes more this time. But, Jim, you also have to commend the corner of Tony Tellis because they was in there for the welfare of his safety because they saw the power of Mike Tyson. They saw that the man was hurt and was indeed down. Interestingly, Ray, one of the things that Tubbs had seemed to demonstrate throughout his 26 fight career up to that point was a pretty good chin. Well, he has a very good durable chin, but again, that's Mike Tyson there. And right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official statistics on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official time. Two minutes, 54 seconds of the second round. The winner by knockout victory. Now 34 consecutive victories. Still the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Well, Ray Leonard, uh, Tony Tubbs himself, as it turns out, said it best in a press conference a few days ago when, in sarcasm, he said to the audience, I'm the tune-up, the big fight is in June. As it turns out, he was exactly right. He was the tune-up, the big fight is in June. What did Michael Spinks see today that he will have to worry about on June 27th? Well, I'm sure that Michael Spinks saw the power of Mike Tyson and that Mike Tyson is indeed getting better and better, more patient and more destructive as in a sense. And right now, that young man is with Larry Merchant, so let's go straight up to the ring. All right, Mike Tyson, it seemed that Tony Tubbs went right at you and tested you, and you were a little bit too strong for him, but he was effective until you hurt him. Well, he was effective because I planned it that way. I was looking for the opening, because I planned for him to run, and then when I saw he became such a easy target to hit, I was just planning and planning. And he had his hands up very high. I was surprised that he had his hands up so high. And so I started hitting to the body and bringing it up in the middle. And then as soon as he brought his hands up, I saw his eyes and I aimed right for his eyes. He said that nobody had ever gone to your body before and he wanted to try you there. He did hit, hit you a few b blows there. Did he hurt you at all? Not Distract at all. you even? Not at all. My, my mission is to go and destroy and not to let anything get involved. You get punched, you get hurt. I refuse to be hurt, knocked down and knocked out. I can't lose. I refuse to lose. What was your response to the audience here, which is kind of quiet compared to the crowds in America? Did you I, hear anything or not, not at all? Anything? Not at all. I knew there were people scratching me when I was coming through, but I had such an intense tunnel vision. I just my, my objective was just to get in there and get my hands on my opponent. Okay. When he didn't come out moving and jabbing and doing those kind of things, what was your first thought about well, that? Well, I said, well, this is going to be a complicated fight. It's going to be a fight. He came to fight, and, you know, and I was. I, for the last moment, I prepared for him to just come out swinging because Kevin said he's going to come out and try to rough you. Did he at all try to rough you up? Absolutely. I, I, felt, I felt the tip of his um, glove around my eye. I don't know if it was the thumb, but in fighting, you're in a hurt business. You can't complain. And he was there to complain. Is it just a question, do you feel, that no matter what anybody's plan is, that your power will negate any plan. Our plan is better. <laughs> our plan is, we just, the objective is to win. We don't fight by book techno technology or anything. We come to fight the authentic way. When you see a man come out and he's obviously that out of shape and heavy, does that lull you in any way in the first round? Not at all, not at all. That was his prerogative to come out the way he did. My job is to finish him off. You see, someone if he would have went 10 rounds, six rounds, seven rounds, then someone could say something critical towards my performance. But he came out, he came in, he, was a, he came out a tough performance. He didn't come like a guy that just came to pick up a payday. He got hit with a solid shot. It looked like it was above the eye, but I tried hitting exactly in the eye. And he took a, a great shot and he went down. But if he, if he were the last six or seven rounds and he was out of shape, then you could criticize me. But he came to fight. And if anybody could criticize that he was out of shape, I did what's supposed to have been done to a person that was out of shape. I got rid of him quick. This is your first fight as a newlywed. Were you thinking about that at all? Did you want to put on a special performance in any way? Not at all, because when I'm in the ring, I'm objective, tunnel vision, and it's just this is my world in here. I have to ask you one last question, Mike, in an article in Sports Illustrated that's on the stands now back in the States. 
It was said that sometimes after a fight, because you have so much adulation now and everybody's around you, you feel you have to go back, put a mask on, beg for quarters, go no. back to your old neighborhood. No. Is that true? No, I don't do that. I said me and my friend did it want, do it once and all for a joke. Because he makes a joke, you know, he always say, people always say, Mike Tyson, you have a lot of money, you do this and that. So one day, me and my friend Rory at school, we put on mags and baggy clothes and bummy clothes, and we went on the street begging for money. Just as a personal joke for myself. So we won't have to throw any charity for you. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike Tyson.